Before we get into the video, make sure you guys subscribe, like, and comment down below of what other units or any kind of strategy guys that I can give you guys when it comes to Rome 2 or Empire at War basically. I usually post out videos every uh, Saturdays for, on 12.15am Pacific Standard Time. So stay tuned for my next videos if you guys do want more of these videos. Make sure you guys click that uh, subscribe button and get more of my updates and that notification bell as well. There are many tactics and ways to be able to dismantle your opponents in Rome 2 Total War. Some tend to be aggressive, some tend to be a little bit more defensive, and some tend to be having more of speed on their side basically. You could either go for light units but have more speed, you go for more defensible units but have a lack of attack or lack of speed basically, and there are many ways that you can be able to dismantle your opponents in general in Rome 2 Total War. And this is why a lot of beginners do have a hard time you know, trying to figure out which which faction they should use, what units they should go for, and what kind of tactics and rosters and kind of a, the, U, the army setup that they should go for in battle basically. A lot of my beginners in my RTS coaching session which you guys can find in my discord session. If you guys do are interested of uh, my RTS 101 coaching session, make sure you guys uh, you know DM me on discord and the first six people there are for free basically. So we got six more slots up so go for you guys. It'll be, it'll be a change of your lifetime. So if you guys are having a problem when it comes to Rome 2 Total Wars tactics or trying to figure out what army or what kind of setup I should use during battle, here's a strategy that any beginner can use during Rome 2 Total War. Hi everyone, I'm JK, your own strategist on YouTube and on Twitch, and this is a strategy guide for beginners. So the most common uh, tactics used in multiplayer battles that I've seen in Rome 2 Total War is the majority of the time you have infantry in the middle, missile infantry at the front, and then you have your general in the back basically, and you have cavalry on the side. Pretty boring and also pretty predictable when it comes to just one main army trying to stick together. Works sometimes, but it doesn't work all the time with many people if you got like somebody that does know how to dismantle them, which I do for the majority of time, then the main army is like of no use basically. And sometimes, you know, whenever I do see beginners play, they usually have their missile infantry in the back. I mean, it's short range and your infantry is going to get killed. That's not the purpose of your infantry. Your infantry is supposed to go with against the other infantries not to take all the damage with the missiles that is the missile infantry shot you try to take out the missile infantries on their side before they take out yours and you try you try to take all the damage as you can from the missile infantries with your own not with the melee infantries not with the spear infantries with your missile infantry basically this tactic that i'm going to show you right now is basically called the sub army tactic so you, what you're going to have is one main army in the front and you're going to have two sub armies on the side. This can consist of like arm piercing infantry, just regular infantry, and you're going to have some um, cavalry on the sides as well basically. So I'm going to go into more in depth about the sub army. So these can usually what you can see with my uh, Massalian army which is my main group that you should go for whenever it comes to like just trying to deal with kind of like heavy infantry units or just big armies in general. Now as you can see here with my army, my sub army here, it's going to be consisted of the Celtic warriors basically. Celtic warriors are going to be absorbing the charges wherever, um, wherever the enemy sees me basically. And that's going to get me to be able to flank them around with the armor piercing infantry either in the flanks or at the rear. And also I'll be having some uh, spear infantry units on the back as well. A javelin throwing spirits will be much better because they'll be able to deal uh, high damage against not only with cavalry units to be able to break them easily, with also heavier units as well whenever javelins are their weaknesses. If you guys do want more about like the unit types basically in Rome 2 Total War, you should check out this video right here basically just describes the strengths, weaknesses of all the units in 
Total War Rome 2 basically. If you guys haven't seen that um, part yet, if you guys haven't seen the video, you know, don't don't look at this video yet because it'll be very confusing for you to do so. Uh, check out that video first. Now we're gonna get on to the business, so the sub army. So basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a Swiss army kind of like sub army form basically so you're gonna have any different unit to be able to counter any kind of unit that they have on the other side basically like i said before you know the light infantry like i have the celtic warners they're not supposed to survive if they do survive they'll be great for flanking units in the rear so not only the celtic warriors will be good for flanking they're good to absorb charges and to try to counter against cavalry whenever they do charge at them basically and also when it comes to the um, axe, axe warriors, when it comes in the middle, these guys are built for more going up against heavier infantry. They might be medium infantry, not really the heavy types. These guys have uh, armor piercing damage higher than usually majority of the time with the sword melee infantry. And when you have in the back rear with the spear infantry, these are pretty good against cavalry. Not only when these uh, Oh, the spear infantry that I have, these guys can not only throw spears, they can be able to counter and to be defensible if they need to whenever uh, trouble comes their way basically. If they're being flanked, they can use this thing called the square formation. Whenever trouble comes around, their melee defense is way higher now and they can hold off as long as possible until reinforcements have arrived. And that's where the cavalry comes in. The melee cavalry is supposed to be used to uh, counter against the other cavalry that are charging against you basically or any other infantry units or anyone that's going in your way in the flanks basically. And also by any chance they could be able to use as uh, flank maneuvers against the mainline battle infantry units or can be also used as trying to run down all the missile infantry that are in front of you basically. If you do have the chance, use your melee infantry wisely and use the ones with speed as well. But have the ones with a little bit of defense because you know you need that little mixture when it comes to this army you have a little bit offensive and defensive which i'm going to show you with the main battle like that i have with my messalian army <clears throat> and a lot of times when it comes to like my army as you can see here you can see more aggressiveness on the sides and a little bit more defensive with more the main army line with my uh, uh thorax infantry on the front basically and with my archers and or my gallic hunters at the front trying to shoot or try to pepper the damage on the front lines basically and as you can see with the army that i have in the main area i have a uh, i have two units of celtic warriors basically they'll be able to counter the charges along with the infantry at the front basically whenever it comes to charge damage you do not want your heavy infantry to try to like take that damage that should be with your lighter units with the majority of time your lighter units such as your celtic warriors as you can see with this will be used to more as like cannon fire they're not usually there to um to inflict a lot of damage they're not they're not special that sounds wrong but yeah it makes sense because of the fact what you're going to do with the main army is to try to charge in whenever the infantry stops charging because charge damage is going to be applied to not with the heavy infantry but with the light infantry so you're sacrificing the light infantry with the heavier ones basically so whenever it ever comes to the main line you're gonna go on this ability with the thorax swordsman it's called the shield wall the shield wall is gonna increase their melee defense and they're gonna be holding out there for as long as you could probably like count to a million or, or whatever you know uh, you just gotta make sure your flanks are able to flank around and to be able to and to be able to envelop towards the army flanks and around the rears of the main army lines basically. And the purpose when it comes to sub armies is try to eliminate the flanks first. Because flanks are usually what's more important when it comes to the enemy main battle lines. Because usually they'll have them protected by spear infantry. That's usually strong against cavalry, like this. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna go into more the unit. Oh, we can send strengths because of the fact I already have the video up right here, basically. But as I was saying before, experience would just dismantle cavalry at any way it costs. It might take a while for them to do so, but they will get the job done, basically. Which is why I have the axe warriors and I have the Celtic warriors to be able to absorb that damage and for my cavalry to be able to envelop more and more to be able to just surround the enemy 
and to be able to engulf them with so many units on the side just charging around trying to go with all these you know tactics just charging them ramming in uh, ramming them in and ramming them out out of there basically to try to create havoc in the main battle line and to be able to get those hit and run tactics with the main infantry and to be able to get the hit and runs with the shock cavalry because shock cavalry like i said before you need to keep charging them in keep charging them out basically because they will not sustain prolong of melee combat basically and a lot of times when it comes to messiah they do have a really good precise units precise units in which they i am able to get you know that are pretty good with attack defense speed and they're pretty affordable as well they might not <clears throat> they might not be the best units of all round around like the whole other factions like egypt macedonia rome <laughs> oh man <laughs> the amount of like people that have used rome and i dismantled was I, I don't know shocking because of the fact it's rome a lot of times when it comes to the main the main battle line it's going to be more consistent with your like i said defensive infantry your subunits are going to be more on the speed basically more speed a little bit more attack basically so that you can be able to flank around the enemy or to be able to counter the flank infantry or the ca melee cavalry that's going to co go towards you basically so when it comes to this army development that i have right here basically it's going to be more offensive and a little bit more defensive as well it's gonna have that hybrid version of those two it's a beautiful blend of two the only problem is you really gotta micromanage these units and this is a good way to micromanage it's only um when you group the armies basically it's only when you are able to group the armies basically whenever it comes to the main line you put that as subgroup one and then the rest of the the two of the two subgroup armies you're gonna make them as two and three and then whenever you do select them basically they're gonna be still they're gonna be still in their same formations you know and they can be able to be moved together so whenever it comes to the sub armies majority of the time if you don't group them the cavalry will go way past your infantry units they'll separate from them they will separate from them to the fact that you know once they do get attacked there's no way your infantry your from your sub sub armies are going to be able to rescue them basically so it's always crucial that you guys always use the groups basically so they'll have the same speeds and they'll arrive at the same time basically when it comes to like other factions unlike a uh, messiah i do understand a lot when it comes to like different kind of like units different kind of like you know heavy infantry elite units majority of the time so i'm going to show you guys how you can use this army setup in other factions with no other than iceni so what we're going to do here ladies and gentlemen is to try to assemble our army right now so we're going to go with some uh, chariots basically so they're the cheapest amount of generals that you can have like i don't know you you won't be able to go with the heavy you know heroic riders or just the heroic nobles that's not really necessary right now for your main army line, you're gonna have the Chosen Sword Band. These guys are pretty good, as you can see here, their stats are just very heavy infantry. Just five of these heavy units on the front should do well, basically. And then with missile infantry, you can go for basically either three or four of these slingers. Depending on what you guys want, uh, I recommend more going with four uh, missile infantry so they, in they can inflict the majority of the damage at the front for now basically and then for the spear infantry on the sides we're gonna go with two spear bands these guys are pretty good against uh, cavalry as you can see here they have a huge uh, bonus against uh, large so like elephants chariots or horses they will not be able uh, they will not be able to be broken with horsemen because I mean they're spear yeah you can point them in the butt <laughs> But as I can see here, so now we have the two spearmen. We're gonna go with some flanking units as well. So these guys have a pretty good selection of flanking units. So we got some ambushers right here. That's only what, 670? So that's actually pretty good when it comes to flanking units. So I'm gonna select about two of these guys. These guys will be part of the sub army units. And then what we're gonna do here right now is that we're gonna have a, um, we're gonna have a unit that's gonna be able to keep on like encouraging them. Uh, since Iceni doesn't really have any armor piercing units, we're gonna go with some Druid Nobles. These guys are only 580 basically. They have a small uh, unit pull, 
but they are pretty good when it comes to encouraging you know the other units to keep on fighting they're basically like sub generals they can keep on they can keep them fighting as long as they like basically and then we're gonna go with another chariot unit basically this one will be in the flanks along with the uh, general chariot these two will be on one for each side basically and as you can see we have three more um, slots here we got like what we got plenty of money to uh, have some elite units as well but here's the thing I do not want elite units I want more speed I want I want units I want units that are able to like go around the flanks and are able to secure them basically so we're gonna go with some veteran riders as you can see here now I'm a little bit short on money but you know that can't make up with some we're gonna go with the sword band here ladies and gentlemen because these guys are gonna be pretty strong against going up against the heavier infantry and they can hold off a little bit until they are broken as well so we're gonna go with three of them so without further ado we're gonna get started on this battle here uh whoo, that was a good one so we're gonna have the five heavy infantry units right over here basically we're gonna have the missile infantry these guys these guys will these guys will basically be in the in the front basically they'll take all the damage as much as possible before before the sword bands are gonna be coming in as well basically so, all right so we're gonna go with the drug nobles we're gonna keep them over here basically and then we're gonna keep the spear units on the side as well basically we're gonna keep those guys on the side just in case we're gonna keep these guys right here as well and then we've got oh shoot I forgot we had these guys as well whoops <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna put these units over here basically. Alright, here. So this is what the sub army is gonna look like. You're gonna have your first units as the ambushers, the light infantry. They're gonna be the ones gonna be cannon fodder basically. The light, the, the armor piercing units or just the ones that are gonna be able to be um, supporting your units on the flanks will be the druid nobles I can see right here. And then in the back, you're gonna have the spear band. They're gonna counter off any cavalry, or we're just gonna be able to help the flanks as needed. And on the side right here, we're gonna have the chariots as well as our cavalry units. And then we're gonna apply that to the other side. And then for the main army, we're gonna have the Brin Slingers right here. We're gonna have the sword band. They're gonna be the cannon fighter, as like I said before. And the main infantry heavy line, the chosen sword band. All right, let's get this let's get this battle started, y'all. As you can see here, these guys are gonna be running along with each other, as such as these chariots here. Whenever I do group these guys, these guys are gonna have the same speed as the infantry right here, ladies and gentlemen. You guys are gonna be able to uh, charge each other, but at the same time, you guys are able to uh, cover each other no matter what. If there's any infantry or any cavalry, basically, as you can see right here. So now those guys are stuck, now we can be able to move on with their missile infantry, which we're going to do soon basically. And as you can see over here, the missile infantry have done their work trying to pepper them up as much as possible. Now it's up to the freaking light infantry and with the heavy infantry over here to be able to go into the front lines basically. As you can see here, they're going to charge into the pike infantry, I know that's bad. But here, heed my words basically, these guys will be able to hold themselves off until these guys, the infantry and the cavalry with the sub armies will be able to go around the flanks basically as you can see here. So I got pretty good uh, boxing in kind of technique ready to go and as you can see none of the cavalry units are here to cover them off or to be able to help them because the cavalry over there is being busy trying to go after my missile infantry now i can move in with my infantry and to be able to just seal off the rear and the flanks basically as as we can see right here a beautiful demonstration as there is so now so now that one of the units has routed basically now this part is open for attack so now this unit these units right here the spartan units have already routed now I'm gonna be able to surround each of these two subgroup units of the main army to be able to be surrounded and to be killed one by one basically as we can see right here and like I said with the missile infantry I can be able to expose the flanks if I do do so right here and I can be able to hit them in the back if I do tend to do so I don't think I did because okay
So now that we have the main army all dismantled basically except for some slingers and one of the units here and just a hero unit here is just heroes of Sparta. We can just surround them and to be able to go in for the kill basically. They will not be able to go out. They will not be able to go in at all at any cost. Because literally now what I'm going to do is get some of these unnecessary units, get these light units, and to be able to go after the slingers and to be able to surround more of the units and give them more time to be able to go after the infantry and to dismantle them and to be able to dismantle them once and for all. And as you can see right here ladies and gentlemen this is what happens when you do have a full efficient defensive and offensive army right here. You're gonna rack up a lot of kills to the fact that even the lightest or even the most useless of units can be able to be useful only usually in the flanks and to be able to be more maneuverable than what a defensive and more heavily armored unit can be like basically. And if you guys watched all the way at the end, thank you so much. Make sure you guys, like I said before, like and subscribe. So that supports the channel a lot, basically. And also, if you guys are interested of an event to watch, basically, when it comes to the new showcase of Star Wars Squadrons, I'm actually going to be uh, streaming along with a guy named that Wine Wing Guy. He's going to be the host of the show, basically. And we're going to be showcasing the new game, Star Wars Squadrons. If you guys are interested in prizes as well, make sure you go follow and subscribe to uh, that Y Wings channel on Twitch and on YouTube as well. I'll have the links down below so you guys can be able to do that. And before I go as well, I just want to talk to you guys about Nanoleaf. Nanoleaf is an LED light company that really um, gives you the most creativity as possible when it comes to making your room very beautiful it's kind of like led lights but at the same time it's like legos as well so if you guys are interested of those two things for the price of one make sure you guys click down below on my description of the link of nano leaf and that 10 percent of your purchase will be going to the channel as well ladies and gentlemen if you guys will be doing that thank you so much for that so that will support the channel throughout my time and throughout streaming when with youtube as well well without further ado for the Republic, I'll see you next time.